All right guys, it's L Master here, and it's time to talk StarCraft. Today we're going to be talking about replays, how to analyze them, how to figure out what went wrong, and how to learn from them so you can improve your play in the future. Alright, so now what we'll do is we'll rewatch that same replay, and now we'll look at it from Terran perspective, which is usually the more interesting one to understand why exactly did Terran lose the game. So... Obviously, we knew at the end we were in a bad spot, but let's say we don't even really know exactly where or why we lost. So we'll just try to go through an entire replay, taking a look at, at that. So the barracks comes up. So first thing we see here, um, well, actually, let's double check that scout timing. Um, we'll kind of check build. And that's probably the first thing to start looking at uh, if you lose, is, is, is did your build, was your build executed correctly, and was that a problem? The answer is almost always going to be yes, but you definitely have to check that. So he has not. We have not scouted yet. Um, we're just about to scout. And we see a hatch, so we know it's 12 hatch at this point. So definitely we should have. Well, I guess if we already started this marine, so we do come down and expand. So that's good. That's what you'd want to do. Uh, and then the next thing we need eBay coming up here, and gas. All right, that depot is okay. Never mind. We need that depot. All right, that's fine. Uh, I think eBay is supposed to come before gas in plus one, if I'm not mistaken. Um, oh, I didn't miss that. Yeah, if you actually saw the Overlord, then uh, could have avoided a double scout. But I think the eBay is supposed to come before the gas, but the eBay does get down reasonably on time. Uh, I've, I've been told that it's eBay before gas, and I have done that, and it has worked out fine. So I think it just lets you get a little bit faster upgrade. Uh, if someone's wrong, correct me, but I've been told that now by a couple Terrans, so I think it's eBay before gas. Uh, and then we, let's wait, let's see how quickly the Academy started. Make sure that started when we wanted it. All right, so gas, eBay, probably could have been a smidge faster. Academy, looks like it's gonna start reasonably fast. I don't I don't know if you cut SCVs, but it looks like it's gonna start reasonably on time. Yeah, okay. So we're getting the Academy. It's an interesting location. I would probably tuck the Academy in a little bit more. That's kind of maybe in a vulnerable spot. I don't know if I like it there. Um, but that doesn't come into play for here. So Academy. So then the next thing we want to watch for is our SCVs. Um, we're making pretty good SCVs here. Right now it looks like we're getting SCVs pretty well from both bases. We go right into Stim. Are we going to miss any SCVs? Yeah, we're starting to have a few missed SCVs. Um, so Barracks going down. How quickly do we go into range? That's really bad. Unless we got range first. Oh, this is like a... Okay, so that's... A, that's a, so here we have huge problem number one. Rangeless Marines. That's that's like one of those almost you can't do mistakes. So we'll watch this, but most likely this is going to be an issue and come into play. Um, five barracks went up. I'm going to rewatch it one more time just to double check on SCV production. I'll actually zoom out so we can see both command centers and just double check how SCV production was. See if we kept this guy basically constantly going. Looking pretty good. All right, so we're being pretty consistent there. All right, well here we have a pretty big stopping point. Um, overall, though, it's not bad. Overall, though, it's not bad. All right, um, adding the commsats since you haven't scouted. You can you can delay commsats if you have scouted. All right, so that's not too bad on SCV. So it's a little bit surprising. I still feel like there had to have been some miss because I shouldn't be ahead in supply, but we'll watch from there. Um, range is on its way. We got three turrets. Okay, so range finishes now, but it definitely made it a little bit harder to to move out because it's not done yet. Let's see, where am I meter? My meter out now. Yeah, you're not. You don't don't really want to have the timing, and that might have even been a reason because right now. Uh, there's really no reason Foxbat couldn't have moved out. He basically has what he wants, um, and he's out on the map. So, like, if he keeps moving out, um, I'm already out on the map, and he's got turrets. Like, I'm not going to turn around and go harass him, but because I saw him turn around and stay at home, I said, oh, well, in that case, I'm going to go harass. But if you would have just been able to commit uh, to just pressuring out here, I would have had to stay and fight you with the mutas. So now I've bought myself a good solid... 15 20 seconds and without the range, you know, you probably were right to turn around and go home But that cost you 15 20 seconds. So we'll see how that plays into the game 
because um, see, we still haven't moved out here. We had we had a group to move out about seven minutes. It's it's 7:30 and still not out on the map. Scan goes down. Still defending the harass. Uh, we're starting to miss a few SCVs now at this point, uh, which is which is relevant. It's one of the reasons why the supply is keeping reasonably even. A little bit of harass going on back here, but see now we're moving out here, but we're not actually crossing our bridges until about 7:45, 7:40. So that's that's 30 or 40 seconds later than would be ideal. So if we take a look at this position right now, right? Three Hydra coming across. Now, we see a missed opportunity here. Uh, the meat have been harassing at home. So uh, a, a scan and a stim and go for it. This would have been a pretty good time to stim and go for it to get the Hydra. But let's go back. See, it's 820. So let's imagine we had done everything smoothly and we were out on the map at, at 7, we'll even call it 730. So let's imagine the group is at the same position at 730. They've got Marines and Medics right here. There's a unmorphed third base, and there is not even Hydra walking it. Free kill, third base. Just, there you go. Third base gets killed. So now we know there's there's at least one major major problem, and that's we weren't, we, we missed an opportunity to kill a third base with general better execution. We also missed an opportunity to kill the third base here with a stim and intercept Hydras. And then, so let's see here. Yeah, I guess this is tricky. I guess you can't really target fire the egg. So I just tried to buy time with the Muta, and it was possible to do that. And then this. With the full group of Muta here, this was pretty ballsy. Like, you can take these risks, but I would call this a pretty large risk, especially because none of these lurkers were super hurt, and there were three. If there were two, or one of them was really hurt, maybe. And I mean, it comes close to working out. But eventually everything does get clustered up at the ramp, and there were lings coming across. So that that that's pretty costly. So now the other thing we want to look at is we we teched pretty late, right? So jumping back here, because um, now we got to look at our follow-up. We weren't able to kill the third base, so we need to think where are we as, as far as follow-up. We've had five racks done for a while. I mean, we produce a lot of rounds out of these five racks, and our money is high. Like we have. Uh, 400, 400, uh, and there's still no factory here. Uh, there's nothing really we're delaying for. We have queued marines in our barracks, so there's just absolutely no reason not to have a factory. And by getting so late of a factory, that means you don't have any sort of transition. You just have marines and medics, and Zerg has lurkers, and Zerg has lurkers, hypothetically. Um, so there's there's nothing you can do. You, like you can make you can't even make dropships because you don't have your whatever. So you, Zerg can just sit back there and literally all you can do is derp around the map. Like you can bounce back and forth between the bases, but if they just leave their lurkers there, you just have zero options. We're still tons of minerals, still no factory. Factory could have been down a minute ago. So we'll we'll look at this. We see the factory goes down at nine minutes. It probably could have been down as early as seven or seven thirty. So let's see when that factory comes down, and then do we go immediately to the vessels? No, we have another pretty significant latent period so we're about two minutes delayed from when we could have our first uh tech move so our, our starports finish we do immediately add the science facility so that's really good but notice we're at 11 minutes right now hive is done defiler mound is out uh let's see when those first vessels pop and of course this group is absolutely useless because there are two lurkers up here and and whatever uh and of course there there's a decent number of units back over here um, again, you know, we a little bit off on SCVs. We lost that group, haven't been able to do much to Zerg. So Zerg is able to eco very hard here. And then we have our science facility finishing. So again, this could have been about two minutes sooner. We do immediately start to radiate. We grab a drop ship and a vessel. I would probably commit to either double drops or double vessels. Um, but let's take a look at when this drop ship pops. So this dropship pops about 12.30. So that means we could probably drop at about 13. So let's go back to 11 minutes and see, had we dropped at 11 minutes, what would, have, what would have been like, or what would have been like at 11 minutes if we show up with two vessels? So if we show up with two vessels, there are three muta, that's almost negligible. There's only two lurkers here. Uh, there is a Nidus Canal up, so that's, that's concerning, um, but it, it's up. But consume is not done yet. So there's no consume. Uh, there's actually no defilers yet out on the map. Um, now probably this could be defended. 
uh, with this use of this Nidus Canal, there's there's quite a few units for Zerg here, so probably could defend this uh, and probably could deal with a drop, but certainly a double drop coming in right now. This base is totally unscouted. Um, this could be reasonably defended, but you know there's there's a few more opportunities here to do something. I mean, the position is certainly bad, uh, even if we have two vessels right now, but there's there's a little bit more of a window than there is quite a bit later after consume is going to be done. Plague is actually going to be pretty close to being done. There's just a lot more units from Zerg. Uh, the network's a little more established. Look how much stuff is sitting up here in the main, able to defend drops. Uh, and also without vessels, like with vessels, we could have been able to radiate those defilers and been able to contest the fourth base of Zerg a lot more. Um, but there's still like, because we could have had vessels here two minutes earlier, so we could have been dropping some irradiate, slowing all this stuff down and making it much more difficult to expand here. But unfortunately, you know, that, that tech wasn't there. And, and now you can see there's just not many options. I mean, there's good irradiates being cast, uh, but, you know... Zerg is defending pretty well. The vessel count isn't high enough to try to break through this. Now, getting a third is good. Uh, I guess what I would say is probably in a situation like this, it would be worth it in a lot of cases to try double drops because like, or, or committing to either one or the other, but we're kind of having some idle time here. But there's no vessel count. You know, if you started going for lots of drop ships, it's a pretty good way to deal with Zergs and cause them trouble unless they're really good or playing really defensively. And, you know, without the vessel count and without the drop ship count, there's just, there's again, no avenues to pressure. It's very trivial for Zerg to throw up a swarm here and a swarm here and just stonewall you for ages. And when you only have one vessel, like they can just make defilers and outproduce that. Um, so we're getting the third base, which is fine. Now let's talk a little bit. So making a few vultures is also for sure fine. But now here, this I wanna talk about. Uh, well, we're still staying on three racks. Uh, we are adding a few more vessels. Um, vessel count has not been kept super high, though. All right, so here, here, all the factories, all the barracks lift, and you go mech. Now, mech is fine, but transitioning to mech usually works the best uh, when you have kind of control on both sides. And right now, you, you do have some control here, but honestly, I have the bridge, uh, so I can still get out. And I can still get out, obviously, over here. So it's very hard to take total map control with this unless you still have map control with the Marines because it's the transition that's dangerous. If I just give you four minutes, yeah, you're going to be fine. But actually getting these bases up, if I was a better Zerg, I would really not let you do that. And because you're only on Vulture Tech right now, it's very easy for me to do that when you don't have control of, of these two locations. Like, ideally, you want to have Marines and Medics here and here, and then the vultures start mining it up, and they make it so I can't get out on the map. Because if I get out on the map and start getting even a few lings in during your mech transition time, it totally throws off the economy and the ability to make that transition. So I would question perhaps the uh, idea to go mech here. I would say that bio, and I would also say a far base over here. Like, it's a failing of my part to, to not scout this and let you have this. But you do not have the units you need whatsoever to secure this base. Um, so it's either a conscious ninja base, but in terms of like a strategic decision, it wouldn't be like correct. I mean, you're relying on your opponent to be bad to make something like this work. And, and a good Zerg should be checking for, for bases at this point. And I do reasonably soon, and, and I am able to shut it down pretty easy because you're in the middle of that mech transition time period. All you have is vultures. Like there's, you know, there's only so much vultures can do, especially if I bring more units down. And of course, this group, you know, can't can't do anything in here. There's four or five lurkers. Uh, the third base isn't saturated, so we're just seeing a lot of things here that just result in everything crumbling. You know, now that I have my full tech out, it was always going to be hard after that third base because, like again, I think there were a few missed SCVs. You know, you lost a lot, um, but then the the lack of tech follow up puts you really far behind. And then probably this choice to try to mech switch at this stage was like the final nail in the coffin combined with not getting over here. I also don't know where you're at with upgrades. Um, actually, upgrades seem okay-ish. For 16 minutes, that seems okay. Um, but yeah. So that that's kind of how we go back through and look at a replay. You know, you sort of check, is your build good? And then you look at like a critical moment. You know, you got to know in the matchup, like ZVT, denying the Zerg's third. You know, uh, if your goal of your build is to deny the Zerg's third, did you deny the third? 
yes or no. If the answer is no, then you have to look at the replay and say, okay, why was I not able to deny the third? You know, what what went wrong there? And we kind of saw how we went through this. We saw that, you know, range wasn't on time, which made you hesitant to move out. And then without that, you got 30 more seconds for Zerg, and that was enough time to have lurkers on the ramp morphing and hold that attack off. Had you been 15 seconds earlier, boom, no third. Game goes totally different. Uh, and then and then we looked from there and said, okay, well, we're behind, but did we have opportunities to win? What opportunities did we miss? And, and then we, we kind of went through that looking at, all right, well, what would I need to do damage? You know, like I have Marines and Medics. Could I have done damage with that? Okay, no. Zerg has lurkers camped in, in chokes. Marines and Medics can't take that. So what would I have needed? Tanks, drops, vessels. Did I have my tech for that? No. Could I have built my tech for that earlier? Yes. Okay, there's something I can think about for the future. And that, and that's kind of how you go through a replay. You look at those kind of the basics, and then you look at your critical critical spots where you needed things to happen or attacks, and you say, could I made that have made that attack work? Was it just bad execution? Uh, was it a bad strategic decision? Did I have the right units? And you you backtrack and work through that way. So yeah, I guess that's my take on how to analyze through a through a replay. And if you get stuck, which will sometimes happen, it'll even happen to me, where you watch a replay and you're just like, man, I'm not sure. Like, did I not build the right army? Or did I not have enough production? Did I take my third too soon or just not cut probes right? If you're not sure, which will happen a lot when you're new, and it'll continue to happen at any point, but it'll happen a lot when you're new. If you just have no idea, then that's where, you know, making use of my Discord or making use of, of Foreign Brood War Discord or, or Team Liquid's resources and posting and say, hey, what went wrong in this replay? And then you can get that feedback you need if you just don't know enough yet to know why something went wrong. And as always, if you guys found the video helpful, please smash that like button and subscribe.